Orthopedic Emergencies Outline Introduction Types of Orthopedic Emergencies Basic Management of Orthopedic Emergencies Hand and Wrist Injuries Hand Injuries Forearm, Radial Shaft, Elbow Fractures Upper Arm Shoulder Glenohumeral Dislocations Clavicle Pelvis Hip, Femur Knee Injuries Lower Leg Ankle Ankle Dislocation Foot Metatarsal Fractures Introduction Orthopedic emergencies are common in the emergency department and can be a threat to long-term limb function. Types of orthopedic emergencies Muscle contusion Bruise Strain Muscle strains are classified by the amount of muscle fibre injury. First degree muscle strain Second degree muscle strain Third degree muscle strain Sprain Sprains are injuries to joint ligaments that result from a forced abnormal motion of the joint. Dislocation A joint is dislocated when the articular surfaces of the bone are no longer in contact with each other. Basic Management of Orthopedic Emergencies Sprain because ligaments are relatively avascular, a sprain may require up to eight weeks to heal. First and second degree sprains. Initial treatment entails RICE rest, immobilization, compression and cold packs, and elevation and analgesics, or anti-inflammatory agents. Third degree sprains. These sprains are sometimes immobilized in circumferential casts for several weeks and may require surgical repair. Fractures and dislocations Stabilization of the patient Reduction of swelling Temporary immobilization Pain control Post-reduction immobilization Disposition Hospital admission Discharge Hand and wrist injuries Location The terms radial, ulna, palma, vola and dorsal are used to describe the location of the hand injury. Digits The digits can be numbered or named 1. Thumb 2. Index finger 3. Long finger, four, ring finger, and five, little finger. Joints. The joints are the distal interphalangeal DIP, proximal interphalangeal PIP, metacarpophalangeal MCP, and the carpometacarpo CM. Diagnosis. Inspection. Palpation. Tendon Function Assessment Neurologic Examination Motor Function Sensation Arterial Blood Flow Assessment Treatment Elevation, Splinting and Close Follow-up Tendon Injuries Flexor tendon injuries should never be repaired in the ED. Partial tendon tears can be treated by splinting the finger, possibly for as long as six weeks, and close follow-up. Hand injuries Infections Paronychia Felon Tenosynovitis Cellulitis Septic arthritis Tendon injuries 
trauma, finger sprains, finger dislocation, phalanx fractures, distal neck fractures. Forearm, radial shaft, elbow fractures. Forearm, forearm shaft fractures of the ulna or radius frequently occur together and are usually displaced. Nightstick fractures, Montegia fracture dislocation, Galazes fracture, radial shaft fractures. In adults, displaced fractures of the radial shaft typically require open reduction and internal or external fixation. Elbow Subluxation Elbow dislocations Treatment is by either passive supination or extension of the forearm. A click can be felt over the radial head as the subluxation is reduced. For dislocation, reduction is accomplished by traction and counter-traction after adequate sedation. After reduction, the neurovascular examination is performed again and the arm splintered in 90 degree flexion. Cylindrical cast should not be used. Upper arm Distal humerus fractures Hemarthrosis Treatment. If neurovascular injuries are not present, these fractures are immobilized in the ED with a sling and swathe. Shoulder. Acromyoclavicular joint injuries, shoulder separations are common. Classification. Shoulder separations are classified according to the amount of ligament disruption. Type 1 injuries Type 2 injuries Type 3 injuries Treatment of all three grades of injury consists of rest, ice, analgesics and immobilization with a simple sling. In addition, some type 3 injuries may require open reduction and repair. Glenohumeral dislocations Anterior dislocation of the shoulder Posterior dislocation of the shoulder Treatment Sling following reduction Anterior dislocation of the shoulder Posterior dislocation of the shoulder Back of shoulder Humerus Arm bone Front of shoulder Clavicle Clavicle fractures are the most common fractures of childhood. The clavicle should be inspected and palpated along its entire length in every patient with a suspected shoulder injury. Most clavicle fractures heal within six weeks without complications. Non-displaced fractures require only immobilization with a sling. Displaced fractures do not need immediate reduction and only require treatment with a figure of eight brace. Pelvis. Pelvic fractures are common and commonly result from blunt trauma sustained during motor vehicle collisions. All multiple trauma patients should be initially suspected of having a pelvic fracture and a pelvic radiograph should be obtained. Fractures that result in a widened pubic symphysis are unstable. Diagnosis Most pelvic fractures are suggested by mechanism of injury and physical examination findings, for example, pain on palpation. Fractures of the pelvis Ipsilateral Locked symphysis Tilt Type A Type B Type C Hip femur Hip Hip dislocations are posterior in 90% of patients 
and occur when force is applied to the anterior of the flexed knee. The leg is shortened, internally rotated and adducted. Treatment consists of close reduction under general anesthesia. Ideally, hip dislocations are treated within 6 hours of the injury. Femur Intertrochanteric fractures Subtrochanteric fractures Femoral shaft fractures The leg is shortened, adducted and externally rotated. Surgical fixation by an orthopedic surgeon is required. Knee injuries The injured knee should always be compared with the known injured knee. The patient's gait, degree of active flexion and degree of active extension should be noted, along with the presence of skin trauma or swelling. The knee is systematically palpated for point tenderness, effusion, hemarthrosis, and increased temperature. Lower leg, tibial plateau fractures. Non depressed fractures can be treated with immobilization and restricted weight bearing. Depressed fractures require open reduction and elevation of the bony segment. Tibial shaft fractures. These fractures require reduction, immobilization, and follow up with an orthopedician. Compartment syndrome of the anterior compartment of the lower leg is a common complication of tibia shaft fractures. Ankle. Ankle sprains most often involve the lateral collateral ligaments and result from the application of an inversion force. First and second degree sprains are treated with compression, ice, elevation and immobilization. Third degree sprains require orthopedic consultation and may require surgical repair. Ankle dislocation Foot Dislocations Ankle dislocations usually have concomitant malleolar fractures. The ankle should be reduced with inline traction and immobilized. Orthopedic consultation is required. Foot Calcaneal fractures are the most common type of tarsal bone fractures. Orthopedic consultation is usually required to reduce these difficult fractures. Metatarsal fractures Avulsion fractures of the base of the fifth metatarsal are the most common types of metatarsal fractures. Treatment consists of restriction of weight bearing and follow-up. Phalanx fractures are common and usually result from a direct blow to the toe. Treatment consists of reduction of the fracture by traction following digital anesthesia. The digit is then immobilized by body taping the broken toe to the adjacent toe or applying a walking cast.